So first of all, I would like to welcome you to the show. I'm really glad to have a female artist like you. So welcome to the show, Abir. Thank you for having me. Okay, Abir, how you can I be like define yourself? Like introduce yourself. My name is Abir. I am a Moroccan American singer songwriter, and I my whole mission is to break barriers. That's all I stand for. I break barriers wherever I go, and I take I never take no for an answer. So I'm just want to ask you about your music. Like for, for example, like the first time I see your music, you know, because um, I'm a music journalist, so I listen to a lot of music, and especially I'm passionate about like and traditional artists. So when I see the first your music and I listen to your uh, album and I listen to uh, uh, your music video, I see an Arab woman and a woman on a mission. So I want to ask you, what is the mission and how you feel about that? I mean. I, I've, I've been saying this since I was younger that, um, you know, God, I mean, I'm very, very spiritual, very religious person, but God has given me this talent or this voice to do something with it. And I always said, you know, I want to help people. I want to help people, whether that means the money that I make for music goes to helping people, or is it that my voice can help people? And right now with my music, because I haven't, you know, blown up and I'm not making millions of dollars, I know that the way that I can share my perspective and, you know, um, just be honest in who I am and be, be myself a hundred percent. I know that that can help people because there is this very, you know, narrow-minded view of what an Arab woman is in today's society and even just a woman, you know? Um, and I think that sharing my perspective and how I choose to live my life and what I'm doing will help others feel comfortable living theirs and being comfortable in their skin. Interesting, Abir. And uh, I want to take you back a little bit, like when he was five years old, about how about like your family when they're shifting from Morocco to U.S., and how that things like impacting in your life, you know? Like, uh, I want to hear like your thought and your memory about that. Oh, you know, I was so young. I was six years old or something. Something like that. I was like coming here on my sixth birthday. It was, I, we came to America July 7th. <laughs> um, and man, it was, so, it was so interesting growing up because like any anybody moving to a different country it's you don't speak the same language you know you're put in classes where it's you're obviously separate from everybody else that's getting a normal education and you have to like learn the new language learn the new you know customs how people communicate how, like what the daily life looks like and for me i struggled when i was younger but um i think it, it, it was only like a couple years that i was felt like, okay, I don't know how to speak very good English. I was speaking French. And then obviously the way I look, you know, my nose, my, my eyebrows, it was very like people would tease me about it. They'd be like, you have a unibrow or whatever. But I don't know. I never let that, I never let that stuff bother me or break me down. I kind of just knew that I, I maybe I watched too many movies mm -hmm. but like I kind of knew that was like a part of growing up you get teased you get bullied you're not the same and now I would you know I, I remember just hiding that stuff back then but now I'm like oh yeah I'm gonna push this to the front this is me I'm Arab I'm Moroccan I'm Muslim I'm all these things and they make me they make me you know who I am so I'm not gonna hide that this is very interesting and I want to also like discuss about um, also like your passion for music because since you are young you listen to different type of music and especially like being an immigrant in the US you have different tastes you can go back to home country listen to Arab music and then sometimes to English music I want to ask you how you feel when you listen to Ita Gems music in the limousine how it sounds oh man uh you know those are my I I, I share this story often because it's it's legit what happened in my life, you know, but I, my dad had just such a crazy, crazy collection. And, and I just remember that being my favorite part of the day, like not to be super corny, but like as a young girl, like leaving school, like I was just waiting for the day that I was like, okay, when he plays that song, I'm going to know it this time. Like, I'm going to know how to sing along or I'm going to know how to, you know, mimic the voice that you hear on the speakers and i think after a while i just started to i just started to become obsessed with singing and that's legit what i trip like that's what i uh say i always tell my dad you are the reason that i sing <laughs> you are the reason that i'm a singer because 
you were playing music that made me want to sing. That's really interesting. And I feel like uh, your dad's very uh, big inspiration in your journey, you know, and this is why I want to kind of like connecting the story. And uh, let's talk about like at your uh, start stage in the music, you know, how, how you was uh, picturing the music and how you was thinking about the start in the music. Can you tell us more about the story? Oh man, oh man, I, I had a very different, very different vision of music when I was younger than, than I do now. I think before I just, I, I'm a vocalist first. I enjoy singing and that's legit what makes me the happiest, just to be able to sing and practice notes and get into, you know, make my vocal, get my vocal range uh, stronger or, or like hit certain notes that I didn't hit the year before. That's what I was worried about. I was like, oh my God, I just want to be a good singer. And I wasn't so much thinking about the business or like what it looks like, but the, the sad and good thing about music is it is a business. And once you start, you know, just creating music and, and um, going to the studio, making album, going on, it, it's, you start to see more of the business side, um, which is much different than what I was thinking about when I was younger. I'm like, oh, singers write their music and they go to the studio and they record it and then they perform it live and that is it that's what happens but there's so much that happens in between those you know a b and c points that you you don't think about as a kid and now as a 26 year old woman like i i definitely i'm aware of what what happened what really happens and i can go back and talk you know talk to myself as a seven eight year old and be like you had no idea. You had no idea that that's why you heard that record. They had, they, that, there was a lot of planning that wasn't just by accident, you know? Yeah, I think this is really very important. And I want to ask you like, um, how, like tell us about your first team in the music, like how you started like kind of like shifting from just like making music by yourself to starting working with the team, with the producer, how this shift help you to see bigger image on the music? Oh, wow. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think, what did I, do? I mean, you know, as, as a young girl, like I would just perform wherever I could and I would try and, you know, literally sing anywhere that anyone could hear my voice. And when I started becoming super obsessed with my music and just writing, I started writing music. I would like take instrumentals offline and I would just like, you know, write a song to it. And then I tell my mom, oh, mom, I want to go, I want to go to the studio. You know, I'd find a studio and my mom was like, at first, like, uh, I don't know about this. Like, are you sure? And they were, they didn't like love the idea, but they took me anyways. And after that, I saw how expensive it was first, you know, to actually go and record your music. It's expensive. Um, and oof, I just remember saving so much, like, all the money that I would make from my job at the time, I would put in my, you know, my little piggy bank and I would save it for any time I wanted to go to the studio. And along the way I met, I met a lot of people at that studio. And I think just putting myself in an environment where people are all about music and can listen to your music and listen and like stop by or like walk by the room and just hear your voice or something like that. You give yourself an opportunity to meet new people um, and it, it gave me an opportunity to meet new people. And then I started working with a producer who was just happened to be there that Saturday that I was there and then so on and so forth. Um, until I eventually just built a small, small circle of people that I could, you know, trusted musicians that I could go to if I want, if I wanted, if I had an idea, if I wanted to write a song or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, it just kind of kept growing in a way. That's really interesting. And how you deal a bit with uh, the opinion, you know, because, you know, like, for example, like when it comes to music creation, artists have his own opinions, the society have its own opinions, the professional have different opinion, the label have different opinion. So as a small girl, how you was dealing with this kind of like, uh, let's call it like a, a hate or like a, it's something really like and the distracting the way you make music. So how you deal with this? Yeah, I think, man, everyone, that's something I'm still de dealing with, you know? Everyone always has an opinion. And that's, that it's not necessarily a bad thing. If you look at it as a bad thing, it can be a bad thing. But I, I'm very open. I'm a very open-minded person. But I'm only open-minded because 
I make a, I make a choice first. Before I, I take in an opinion, I always make sure to have one of my own so that I'm not like, you know, easily moved by other people's opinions or, you know, latching onto other people's opinions. Because um, the truth is everyone just always has something to say. Yeah. <laughs> because you know, it, it, it's, whether it's someone in the label, whether it's, you know, just my sister listening to my music, they always have something to say. Um, and yeah, I, I, I really do think that opinions can help because if you just, if you're, if you're one of those people that just knows what they want and don't want any opinions, that works. But for me, I like to hear what people think. And then I'm like, okay, cool. Actually, I like that idea. I'm very good at gauging. I'm like, you know what? I do like, I like that or I like this, whatever. But when it comes to like image or like how I look or how I should walk or how I should talk, all of that, no, that's a, that's a definite no. Like I don't, I don't tell anyone else how they should live and I don't judge anyone else on how they should live. So I don't like to be judged on how I should live. And I don't really take opinions on that. You know what I mean? I mean, for my dad, I do. Okay. <laughs> he's good. He's good. He's, he's, he has, I mean, he's, the reason that you know I think the way I do that I'm you know my dad is such a kind person and he cares about good 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 things like he wants only good things for me and so that's the person that I really take opinions from on how I should you know how I should do business or how I should act in according to this or whatever but you just have to gauge I think I, I again I, like I said opinions can be can be okay just as long as you can make your own and know which one works for you this is really interesting because um uh, i think as an artist's perspective there is a lot of challenge and there is a lot of pressure you know on artists in terms of what fans want what people want what audience want what your family want and um if the artist doesn't really stick in terms of like what good in terms of uh, musically it can really kind of like changing the journey you know which is i understand from your answer that you find your way to manage this because it's different between just you making music by yourself and making music with the group and labels and a lot of people involving in the process right yeah 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 i mean I've, i i will say this i mean uh when you do sign to a label um they sign you because of your music or they see potential in you or whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, you're signing into a partnership and a partnership is between two people. So it can't, you're the artist, they're the label, but you, it's, you always have to work together in tandem because if you don't, you're just going to, this like, it's, what's the point. You're not going to go anywhere. If you have an idea and you know, they don't like it, but you have to kind of meet in the middle ground. So for me, my, in my experience with the music that I've made, I've, there's tons of times I've played a song and um, you know, I've had someone be like, mm, I don't know about that one. Then I'm like, ah, oh, interesting, really? Because I really feel this one. They're like, ah, oh, well, if you feel it, if you absolutely feel it, go for it, but we don't love it. So then in my head, I'm like, oh, damn, well, Okay, I do feel it, but they don't love it. So I'm like, I always, I, it's not like I'm compromising my art. I just always try to shoot for the highest and the best that I can possibly be. So that's where I don't mind the opinion. Cause I'm like, they're going to let me do it regardless. But they're like, look, we don't feel it. But if you feel it, do it. So I'll then go and I came, I, there was a record actually, Finest Hour, my, one of my biggest records um, here that I did with a, a duo, I mean, a, a trio, a DJ trio, Cash Cash. I came with the song on just the piano to the to the label and I was like, oh, this is the song, yada yada. It was like a you know full arrangement, didn't have any of the current vibe of the record. And they were like, okay, hmm, cool. You know, they weren't like totally going crazy. Um, and then I came back maybe a few months later and I had worked with Cash Cash now. And I played them the record, same song, same arrangement composition just a little just added some bells and whistles and it like opened their eyes you know they're like oh my god this is amazing this is beautiful let's do it so it was only like a, a, a small amount of changes that 
just changed their mind completely on the record. And from, in my opinion, made the record so much stronger. So in, in that place, I let that, I'm like, they let me do, they were gonna let me do it regardless, but the, the little hamster in my head was like, well, hold on, let me see how I can, let me see how I can get this better. So you also have to take opinions from people you trust. I really want to talk about like your first debut um, single, which is Wave. I think you like kind of like uh, preparing for a wave. So what is the wave that actually dropped, you know? So how, how, what is the inspiration behind that track and why you choose it to be the first um, debut single? Oh my gosh, that one is so old. I haven't even heard that record in so long. Uh, that was, man, wow. Woo. I hadn't, I don't even think I knew who I was back then. I love that record. I was still figuring myself out. I had just moved to New York. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's okay. I had, I had just moved to New York and I was, I was just so excited about life and being in a, in a new place and being, like an artist because I, I that was when I when I moved to New York is when I felt most like an artist because I was like you fully devoted your life to this now you live in New York this is it um yeah. and Wave was, <laughs> Wave was one of those first records I did um and yeah it just talked about like just letting go and just feeling good kind of yeah I, I have to I have to listen to Wow. Yeah. So that's <laughs> the reason why I ask about Wave because the timing of Wave was very uh, crucial in your music, which is bring you other Wave project with Fabulous project with uh, Ill Mind. So it's a kind of bring you a bigger Wave than just only the single. So how it went the experience with Fabulous and Ill Mind? Oh man, um, Ill Mind is my brother. I love him. He's so dope. He is. He's just one of those people that wakes up in the morning, thinks about music, goes into the studio, loves working on new music, and then goes home and enjoys dinner. Like, he lives and breathes music. And that kind of energy for me early on was so inspiring. And even to this day, I speak about it all the time. I think it, it helped me realize what kind of people I want to work with. I want to work with people who are devoted to their music, but in, in, with balance, with such a balance. So working with him was amazing. Um, wow, this is really going off. Um, it's okay, sorry, yeah. My, yeah, young OG. <laughs> um, young OG, uh, fabulous. He's dope. I, I, that, came, that came about through a producer I was working with at the time, Mark Henry. And it was it kind of just, I, I had done the chorus on another track like I just kind of uh, recorded that chorus one day and put it in a folder and never looked back and my producer ended up sending it to Fab um, like a, a year later and then I went in and re-recorded it and met him and it was it was dope I mean if you had told me back then I, I thought I was legit like holy crap what is going on you know I was I was just like how am I on a record with Fabulous I grew up listening to Fab yeah, and I see also like you are big uh, inspired by Frank Ocean. Why Frank Ocean exactly? Like, what is the passion about Frank Ocean music? He's just, he's like the most honest artist. I love, I love the way he tells his truth in his music in such poetic ways. And his, the production that he sings over, the way he puts his songs together, they're not like cookie cutter, they're just him. And he, he's so unique. He's such a unique artist. And yeah, I just, I love his songwriting. Uh, he's, one of, he's one of the best artists in my opinion. Interesting. Uh, right now, I think we reached to the, the uh, debut EP, which is Mint. Um, tell us about Mint, how, how you felt about uh, Mint. And there is a kind of like flavor in Mint. So what's the flavor of the EP? Mint. Oh, Mint. Okay. I'm like, wow, we're running, th we're running through these. So Mint came out 2018. Um, it was my debut EP and it was, uh, it was just for me, I, not really to get deep or anything, but for me, it was just about having fun. And it was about recording songs, not thinking so much about them and like not being too crazy and like hoarding them or being unsure or whatever, just 
writing about what I was experiencing at those exact moments that I walked into the studio and wrote those records. And a, a lot of that was me seeing friends change, you know, like growing up, a lot of it was like, holy crap, we're in a different part, parts of our lot. We're in different parts of our lives. We're experiencing different things. I live in New York. You guys live in Virginia. We're still kind of carrying our friendships. A lot of it was about friendships. A lot of it was about relationships and what I was dealing with at the time. And just not thinking too much when I, when I tell my, tell my truth or tell my story and not being super calculated. Um, and Mint, I, I, the actual title came from just the idea of spilling tea. In Morocco, you should know too, it's, it's like we drink a lot of Moroccan mint tea. And to be honest, growing up, only time I saw tea coming out was Moroccan mint tea, by the way. Oh, amazing. Yes. I know, okay. it's okay, yeah. So the only time like I really heard any gossip was usually around tea time. Like they would, after dinner, we'd all hang out. You hear that, you know, the adults are sitting at a different table and they're chatting about what's going on and such and such. So I kind of wanted to use that and say, well, look, I'm spilling the tea about everything that's going on in my life. So let me just call it mint. That's really interesting because um, I, I listened to a couple of tracks, like for example, like, like uh, Tango and Yang uh, and uh, Root. Especially I want to talk about Tango because Tangos have very like um, high uh, emotional track. And even I was surprised to find like Korean creating a cover for the song. I said oh, yeah. like, from, from New York to Korea is like big distance. So I think um, like, how do you felt when you see that kind of like uh, music crossing border? Oof, I don't even know, man. I, it, still, it still boggles my mind, you know? I, I get so excited seeing other people cover my music in general and then seeing people across the world covering, I'm like, how, how? I don't understand. It's amazing. And it's, I mean, Tango has kind of taken a life of its own in Korea, um, in South Korea. And it, it's just, it's just so amazing to see and hear people singing it and dancing to it and, you know, doing, like some people making recipes too. I'm like, wow, this is just, this is kind of, this is kind of nuts. Um, and the song is, is an emotional record, but every time I write about heartbreak, I just don't like to write about heartbreak in a way that's not going to teach me something. So, or not going to feel empowering. And tango is very much that. It's like, okay, it takes two to tango, but only one to let go. And like, I'm, it's okay. You think I can't dance on my own? You think I'm not going to be okay without you? No, no, no. I'm going to be just fine. I'm going to be dancing by myself and having a great time. And that's really just about a toxic relationship where you don't even like the person around. You stop liking the person around and you just want to enjoy your solitude and be by yourself and you're okay without him. But the guy doesn't think you're going to be okay, but you are, and you're living your life and dancing all by yourself. <laughs> That's a really interesting story. So I want to ask you like personal question as an artist, you know, uh, because being an Arab female artist is really maybe different, like a uh, challenge for you. Did you have a moment in your careers at, like you want to stop or there was too much pressure on you? Because I want to understand like how it goes to you because uh, we don't see every day an Arab artist who sing in English and kind of like striving this years to reach where you are today because it comes at cost, mentally, pressure. Um, I want just like to hear about like your, let's call it like your conclusion of this journey, how, how you feel about it and uh, how it goes. Yeah, I mean, I have, I have, it's a great question. Like I have tons of great, great days, alhamdulillah, like I'm thankful. And then I have, you know, tons of days where I'm like, what? what is going on? When is this going to make, like, when is this going to make sense? And I think everyone does, but for the most part, I've, I think the time that I felt the most pressure and the most, you know, affected is by things that I've imposed on myself and things that I've actually, you know, like I'm overthinking or I'm not, I'm not letting go or I'm, 
holding on to something like way too hard or just, you know, everything that I've experienced that feels like pressure or, oh, I don't want to do this anymore is all in my head. You know, it's never by someone else, thankfully, because like I've surrounded myself with such kind people first, not just business people who are good at getting this or getting that. Like they're just kind people and they care and they're human. So I never really get pressure from them because I think they, they care, you know, and they know, I mean, they want me to be successful. So yes, they still tell me like, yo, you need to be on time. But, uh, <laughs> but everything else is just self-imposed. I care a lot about my art. And I think every artist can attest to that, that, you know, we, we have to go home and sleep on our, lay our heads on our pillow and take in everything that's happened that day. So when I don't, for instance, write, finish writing a song, I, it, it can like legitimately change my whole mood for like three days. And it affects me because I'm like, oh my God, like what am I, I don't know how to write a song anymore. Like what's going on? Then I get, or if I like did terribly during an interview, it stays in my head, you know? It's all me, it's all the things that I care about. So. I think with that, I just, I just learned over time, just stop, take a deep breath, it's gonna be all right. You can make mistakes, let it go. It's gone, it already happened. Move forward, it's a new day. This is very uh, exciting, uh, Abir, and I feel like your passion, because uh, it can say directly like you have a really passion for music. So for you, you're enjoying the experience. So it's most like an entrepreneur. So it's not just like about making music and dropping music. So right, right now we're reaching to the most excited part of uh, this interview, which is talking about the recent album hit, you know, because uh, I feel like the album is really very special for you, which is, I want to kind of break it to a certain point, which is like, the album has seven songs, okay? And you moved to US in 7 of July. And you decided to drop it on 7 of August. So maybe you can correct us what happened. There is a missing thing, you know? So, <laughs> like, what is the missing script? Wow, I'm not even gonna lie to you. Wow, I did not even put all those three together and wow. I gotta take a second. I will repeat for you again. So you moved to the US on 7th of July, okay? The album hit is have seven songs, but you decide to drop it on 7th of August. So, <laughs> tell me about the hit. Oh, I, yeah, you're so, you're so funny. I wasn't even thinking about the numbers, but it's just so crazy that they add up seven, seven, you know, Seven is the, my lucky number. So um, I, heat, heat, heat is me. Heat is me now. Heat is the woman that I've become up until these 26 years. And it's really, really a culmination of self growth, self celebration, who I am, and owning that 150%. And it's, it's just, it's who I am. I really, I love, I love this project because I did, unlike men, I, I was very calculated. I was super calculated and I wanted every song to be a true representation of me down to the words, like every single lyric that I wrote. Um, and it's, I think it was a long time coming for this project. This, I think this is a project I've been trying to make for, I don't know how many years. I think it's really like a special project because um, the reason why I ask you the question about the seven, I don't feel that this album is just like a random album. It's a very special album for you. It comes from the artwork, it comes from the song names, it comes from the collaboration, the music video. See, it's more onto like, a, I call it art gallery, you know? And even in terms of like tracks, there is like statement from track to track because you was talking before about searching, but actually I was keeping it for the last question because searching itself is like an entire episode itself, you know? So let's start first by the visual of the album, which is like um, the music video with the Yalla and Inferno, which is like how being in New York and deciding to work with the Sharif Abdelmullah, which is very amazing and talented um, um, director, how the things like went together, you know? Is it again with the mint? Drinking mint as well, like come back to you. 
<laughs> you know, I, at the, at the beginning of, um, I'm actually more towards the end of 2018, December 2018, is kind of when this all came to me and wanting to just put my, put everything that I am into everything that I do and put it at the forefront of my career. Being an Arab woman, bringing that to the music and bringing my true, you know, my, my, my true self, because I was giving like maybe 80%, you know, it's, that's a ton, but I, with heat, I gave the full hundred percent. And, um, when I did this, I wanted to work with Arab creatives. So the first person that I, that I brought on board was actually one of my good, good friends at the time. Um, and still now her name is Ned Jasmi and she's, she was my creative director, um, for this whole project. And, Pretty much what we did, I was like, brought her in. I was like, hey, look, I want to work with Arab creatives on this because this is a song, this is a song, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a uh, project, uh, visuals all about the Arab experience as a woman, but also just the Arab experience in general. But we, we have a missing part in the story. I think um, you forget to mention, which is a part of Morocco. The project has been shot yeah. in Morocco. So to go to the label and tell them that I want to shoot the project in Morocco, I think you have a female support inside the label who actually helped you to make this dream ha happen true. So I want also to like uh, highlight on that uh, milestone. Oh, yes. I mean, none of, yeah, none of it could have been possible without the label because it, it, it was, I went in there and I had this whole, vision and all these ideas and, and everything that we've been working on and I was like hey like this is who I want to work with these are some videos and my video commissioner Shade Smith was like why not go to Morocco like why, why don't we just shoot in Morocco and I was like are you serious <laughs> I was like seriously and I swear to you from that point on that was now that was December 2019 from that point on from December to March when we actually shot, it was like, go, 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 go. It was like, figure out where you're going to do this. Where are you going to go that? Da, 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 da. It was like madness till the finish line. I, I, I see because it was a kind of like a, a, a dream happened true. At the same time, it was a routine, like, like a movie set. So you have very strict schedule set and everything. And also I hear like there is a story also like you was just one week before the lockdown. You wrapped your project. Yes. One week. That much close. <laughs> so nuts. I mean, literally we shot, we shot, um, we shot Inferno March 2nd and then we shot, uh, Yalla March 3rd. And I think, um, a week after the world shut down, wow. like March 12th. <laughs> I, I, I just remember I had to change my, I was planning on staying in Morocco for much longer. Um, like just because it, it had been the first time I'd been there in a really long time. And I, I was like planning like a whole month or something like that. We ended up leaving a week and a half into the trip. So it was, it was madness. Right now you drop hit on August. You drop the music video and how you feel right now? Like right now, how you feel the impact, the feedback of the audience, like how you feel like post dropping the album. I feel so good. I feel so great because these songs are so important to me and I had such a great time making them and I, I put everything that I have into them. Um, and I, I'll continue putting everything that I have in the music, but for this project in specific or to be specific, um, it was after making every record, I would just want to release it. I would be like, oh, do we have to wait? Like, do we have to wait? Um, and so now that it's out, it's just been amazing to see what people think about it. Cause you sit on your music for so long and it's just, you're the only one that's hearing it, you and the producer. So to actually get other people's thoughts on it and what, you know, how it feels and what they're, you know, see people dancing to it, people sharing their message. Like I've been getting such great, great, like heartfelt messages from people. And it's just, yeah, it just really, really touches my heart because it resonates with so many people. So for all your yeah. fans here in the Arab world and in the Middle East, um, they want to know what next for Abir, like what you are working on right now, or maybe what things that you want to share for people who want to know where Abir is going. Oh, what's next? New music, 
new music, inshallah. I've been, I'm working on, an, on my album now. Very excited. Yes. It's my first album. Because these last two projects, they're, they're EPs, and I've, I've put them out as EPs, but this will be my first album, my first real body, body of work, like 12, 15 songs or something like that. Um, and I've just, I'm very excited just to keep talking, keep having conversations and keep performing. I've been doing a bunch of virtual concerts and now I'm working on potentially doing something that I actually film at a venue and um, just keep connecting and keep staying healthy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us because it's really uh, inspiring all of us. And this is the reason why we are making like a proper uh, interview to talk about your story, to help young artists and young female artists to understand the process of music because social media really like kind of like affecting people thinking the easy way. So people doesn't understand that there is like time, there is process and there is a lot of effort and work, you know? So this is why we are focusing to bringing uh, artists and want to break the story how to be in there, you know? Because it's not just like about people taking things easy because music required a lot of uh, passion and quite a lot of patience to achieve yeah. these things, you know? So I think we really enjoy the conversation with you. We enjoy to listen to your story. And at the same time, we'd love to stay in touch with your progress and we'd love to have you again with us on the show. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, seriously. I really appreciated this. Okay, so we wish you like to have a, a good day up here and we, we catch up soon. All right. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.